It's September 11th. I've been in New York for three months now. I spend most of my days training with my father. He says I'm overweight, need to get in shape for health and balance. Pirus, you are 50 pound overweight. 50 pounds, I say. What is your height? 5'11". You need to be 180 for your height. I'm about a 225 now. Oh man, see, this is 50 pounds. Since then, he's been taking me on four hour hikes up and down hills with one bottle of water. You have to keep varying your heart rate. Now we've just finished playing two hours of tennis. We're on another hike straight afterwards. Follow me, he says, and starts doing squats. There you go, one, two, like this, and then faster. Before all of this, I was driving across the country from California. I was on the last leg of the trip, almost in Ohio. I wasn't thinking about losing weight. I was on the phone with my relative from Iran. She was trying to buy a smartphone online. I didn't see why it would be a big deal. Then she explained it to me. You don't understand, Pirus. Since 2017, it is a mess in Iran. One day the dollar is this much, and then the next day it completely changes. I still didn't understand. This means if I buy a phone today online, then tomorrow it might be twice as expensive, then I can't afford it. She explained to me that in Iran now, the economy was so bad that people were lucky to make even $100 a month. And people were really struggling with more and more children on the streets walking without masks or even food to eat. I saw one of these children, Pirus, and I go buy them some food. And because my father, he worked for a medical supply company, I have extra mask and glove and I give these to him. It broke my heart to hear about these kids. I was mad that Trump had made the sanctions so difficult for Iran, but my relative explained that what Trump was doing was actually good for Iran. Pirus, what Trump is doing is good. This will really make the economy collapse, and then this regime will collapse, and the people will be free of these crazy mullahs. This really surprised me. My relative hated Trump's immigration ban and disagreed with his racist comments. But he has called Africa, El Salvador, and Haiti shitholes. But she thought his foreign policy was exactly right in dealing with Iran. It is exactly right, Pirus. I really don't want this Biden to win. If he does, then he will go back to the old deal Obama had, and then this is really bad for us. He just give money to these mullahs and they kill us on the streets. But if Trump wins, you won't be able to come to grad school. The country needs someone that'll bring everyone together, not pull Americans further apart. Oh, I see who you are now, Pirus. You are more American than Iranian. You only care about your country. Whenever I talked to Iranian relatives, I was too American. Oh, someone would say at a dinner party, he forget his Farsi. This is too bad. He got too American. Then among my classmates at school, I was always the foreigner with my briefcase full of cuckoo sabsi, or selected as the class representative if there was a foreign person or a prominent person of color to visit school. I remember when I was 10 years old, I was asked to represent Alexis I Middle School when Jesse Jackson came to visit in Delaware. Mrs. Dorico, who the kids called Mrs. Dorito behind her back, told me to go to the front of the school and wait for him to come. By myself, I said? There was another teacher named Mr. Franzio with her. They were discussing what would be best. They eventually decided to send me and Carlos. We were supposed to wait on the steps for Mr. Jesse Jackson and then escort him inside. Now remember, you say, my name is Peru's. Welcome to Alexis High Middle School. Then you escort him inside. Okay, I said. I walked to the front steps with Carlos. I told Carlos to sit with me in Spanish. He got scared and ran back inside. Then these limousines pulled up. There were two of them in a row. Then these people stepped out in colorful outfits. Then Jesse Jackson. I stood up on the steps and stretched out my hand to him. Hello, Mr. Jesse Jackson, sir. Welcome to Alexis I Middle School. My name is Pirus. Hello, my young brother. Then he put his arms around me and walked me inside. Carlos was supposed to be with me, but he got scared and pointed to him hiding behind the water fountain. Hello, Carlos. Then he put his arms around both of us and walked us straight down the hallway and to the backstage area of the theater. This was where he introduced me to other people. Senator Biden, he said. This is my young brother, Pirus. Then Jesse Jackson started introducing Carlos and me to everyone there one by one. I never shook so many hands. Then Jesse Jackson ran out on stage and started delivering a speech about saying no to drugs and staying in school. It was a really good speech. I watched him and I thought, I want to do that. The White House. They don't see the house I'm running from. I have a story. I thought about all of this as my relative kept talking about Trump being good for Iran. Do you think this Biden is going to help the people of Iran? He's so old. He keeps falling asleep during his speeches. 
Do you think you can stand up to this regime? I didn't say anything. I stopped at a hotel in Ohio. I was afraid of Ohio. The last time I'd driven across the country, I'd been stopped and accused of stealing my car by a police officer. After an hour wait, I was let go. I am very worried for Iran if this Biden wins, my relative continued. Then we will really be in trouble. I didn't say anything about Jesse Jackson or meeting Biden. I understood my relative's pain. I wanted Iran to get better, but I also wanted America to get better. I guess she was right. I had only been thinking about what would happen to America. I didn't think about what would happen outside of here. Think about what happened in Venezuela or Syria or Libya. This Obama really made things much worse. You don't think, Pirus. You have to think about how things affect everyone, not just your country. If one person has trouble anywhere, you have to consider them. You can't just help the homeless in America. What about Syria? What about Iran? It's September 11th again. I'm still hiking with my father. We just finished doing more jumping jacks to get our heart rate up. Now we're running. Raki, my father says. Raki. My father was reminding me about the film. We had many inside jokes like this. It can be explained in a single word. For example, if my father wants to say something about love, he might say, Freedom! Freedom! To reference Braveheart. Or if I argued a point too long, he'd say, Let it go, Indiana. Like in Last Crusade. Indiana. Indiana. Let it go. Right now, he was referencing Rocky. We are in training, he explained a bit more, because he couldn't actually remember a single line from the film. We are like Rocky. I nod my head. I already understood. My father and I rarely talked about politics. Still, I brought up what my relative had said, and he agreed that Obama made a big mistake when he didn't support the Green Movement when 8 million Iranians tried to protest the Islamic regime. This Obama made a big mistake when he didn't support the people, he said, as we now slowed to a fast walk. I write this in a letter to him. I like Obama. But what he did to not support was a big mistake. My father's consideration of Trump as being anything other than a catastrophe had been his rhetoric well before his handling of the pandemic or grabbing people by the pussy or even his countless other lies and cover-ups. Uh, you cannot dismiss entire countries and continents as shitholes. This Trump is like the mafiosa. He doesn't care about America. He is out for himself, Pirus. That I cannot do. You think Biden will be better, I asked. I think so. I only worry about his age. He has to hire a lot of good young people around him. I'm back in the hotel in Ohio. I didn't want to stop back here in case another police officer decided to racially profile me again. But I figured it'd be good to take a risk. I often did things like that. I believed if certain things happened, it meant something. I even thought I could ask for things and make them happen if I did something else. When I was younger, I'd shoot a basketball in Indiana or Delaware and ask for things. Please, I'd say, praying to the ball. If I make this, I'll get a Superman cape for Norus. Or when I got older. If I make this, then Aaron will go out with me. Or in the hotel as I sat safely on the bed. I guess America isn't as bad as I thought. Of course, this is before more killings by police. Or the Rage book coming out. The fires in Oregon and California. Or now listening to the commemorations for 9-11 on my Facebook feed. I hear my relatives. You have to think about everyone, Pirus. Especially the Middle East and Iran. I hear my father walking up the hill by the school. I am more American than Trump. I love this country. I hear Jesse Jackson. Hello, my young brother. I'm four years old again. I have a basketball in my hands. I say, if I make this, it'll help Iran and America. <laughs> Do